Good day. We're going to do a multi-step part creation. Uh, we're going to use Autodesk Inventor Pro 13. And let's get rolling. You'll find that a little bit is different in uh, 2013. And the startup dialog is definitely different. When we choose a standard part, and we can choose any new feature to, to get started, we can also go through the English metric and mold design. Um, and so we can make sure that it's an English standard inch part. And we'll choose our standard IPT. We'll choose create. But you'll notice that our startup screen is different. We no longer immediately start up in a sketch. What's different is we are still in the front view, X and Y, but we actually have to choose create a sketch to get started. And when you choose create a sketch, you'll get to choose the sketch to start on one of three planes. And so you need to think about how your part is oriented within the plane itself and how that part's going to get built. So you need to take a step back, think about how the part is going to be built on which plane, bottom to the top, right side, left side, so forth. In our case, using the XY plane is appropriate for our part. So with the XY plane, you'll notice that we have a center dot. I've turned the grid lines off uh, to make it a little bit easier to, to see all the, f all the detailed parts of the drawing. But we're going to start at the center dot. That will give us a fixed point. It'll locate 0, 0. So we'll choose a line, locate the center dot. Again, it's big and green. Um, I'm going to roll my mouse out and make the uh, screen smaller. And I'm going to make it uh, about three inches. And I can hold the wheel of the mouse down, drag it over to pan. We're going to create a line about that high. Come back over. Now, how can I project? Well, it automatically projected. But if it didn't automatically project, I can come down, highlight the edge, and it will project then from that edge if it could not find it. And so this is our basic part shape. We do need to dimension it. We're going to go ahead and make this 4 inches. We'll make this 6 inches. Again, wheeling the mouse out, using the wheel on the mouse. This is going to be an inch, 1.5 inches. And this is going to be 2 inches. And so our part is now fully constrained. We're going to finish the sketch and extrude the part 3 inches. Again, I'm rolling my mouse back out so you can see what's going to happen. We'll choose the extrude tool. It'll be 3 inches of an extrusion. Uh, and that looks good. So now we've got our basic part. And that's our isometric view. And we're going to ch change up and do something a little bit different. We're going to rotate it around so we can see the back side. I'm going to highlight the back surface left mouse click and I get three options. I can edit the existing sketch, I can go ahead and create a new sketch, or I can edit the extrude component. I'm going to create a brand new sketch on the back of this object. So now I've got a sketch on, this, on the back of the object and the sketch that I'm going to create is basically a simple circle and a rectangle. And since it's parametric I didn't worry too much about the exact placement of either item. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and off or provide a distance of 0.5 for the width and 0.5 for the width. Now could I have made it equal? Yeah, I could have used the equal tool and made them equal, but I wanted to make an equal distance here. I also wanted to have a diameter of 1.75 on my circle. The distance from the circle to the bottom of the rectangle is going to need to be 3.75 inches. Uh-oh, what happened? Well, 
the circle itself wasn't fixed enough against the edge, so it moved the circle instead of the uh, rectangle. So what do we do? Well, the easiest thing is just to undo. And before you go ahead and change this dimension, let's go ahead and anchor the circle a little bit more by adding two dimensions on the circle, an inch and a half down, excuse me, inch and a half from the side, and an inch and a half from the top. Now when we go and change this to 3.75, the rectangle will move and not the circle, because the circle has now been anchored with dimensions. But before I can finish this, I need to trim out some of these lines. So I'm going to go up and choose the Trim tool, select the lines that I need to get trimmed away. So I'm going to make more or less a keyhole shape. We're going to finish the sketch, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude, except I'm going to cut the extrusion. And by the way, this may, not, may be closed. You could also do the same thing here under the pop-up menu and I probably should utilize the pop-up menu more. Under cut, I'm going to select the outer edge and I'm going to cut the outer edge, but I'm not going to cut it three inches. I'm only going to cut it one inch. If I go two inches, it'll cut the whole top off and that isn't good. But if I cut it one inch, it'll provide us our a really interesting profile for the back of the, uh, ob for the, back of the diverter. Okay, so now we've got our profile cut one inch in, and now I'm going to need to create a new sketch surface on the back of the keyhole. So I'm going to take the keyhole, left mouse click on it, create a new sketch. You'll notice that it creates a yellow line. That's called projected geometry. Whenever you choose the project geometry, it'll create the yellow surface. In our case, we're going to offset this yellow line. I'm going to, so I selected Offset, left mouse click on the object, hold your left mouse click button down, and kind of drag it in, and left mouse click Release, and we're going to add a dimension between the two vertical lines. Now that dimension says 0.270. I'm going to go ahead and make this 0.1875. And so what I did here is I set the wall thickness of our cutout. So this internal shape is going to get cut out, and our wall thickness will be 1 point, or 0.1875. So I'm going to again flip it around to the appropriate angle, finish our sketch. We're going to extrude. Again, we're going to cut. This time we're going to go in well, we'll start with an inch, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the internal shape, but the inch isn't going to get me far enough into the part. Now, how do I know how deep that cut is going? Well, I can see it if I rotate to the back view. You can see the shaded component, and if I change it from 1 inch to 1.5, not bad. 2 inches, much better. So I'm going to go 2 inches in on my cut. But again, this gives you the ability to see how deep the cut is going to occur before you actually commit to it. So now we've got the area opened on the inside. And this time we're going to go ahead and create a couple of holes on the face of the object. So I'm just going to go back to the home view, highlight the face surface, again create a sketch, I'm going to put two points on the face. I'm going to locate the midpoint, and to locate the midpoint you'll get a big green dot at the middle of that surface. Bring it straight down from the big green dot, and locate a couple of points. Then you want to line the two points up, and start adding some dimensions. So I'm going to add a dimension from the top. It's going to be 1.25. I'm going to add a dimension from the bottom. It'll be about 1.50. I'm going to add a dimension from the side to make sure that we're centered. That's an inch and a half. 
and it's still saying, well, I need one more dimension. Well, I need to make sure that this is aligned with this. And to do that, I can say that they're vertical. And so if I choose vertical constraint, pick the first point, pick the second point, it'll ensure that they're vertical, and now I'm fully constrained in the lower right-hand corner. So with the points, I can create holes. So we're going to go ahead and finish the sketch, go to the hole command, and this time we're going to create a couple of holes, but the holes are going to be a half inch in diameter. Now right now, the cutout is an inch deep. All right, let's see what happens with the one inch drill depth on our hole. So when we look at this, we've the top hole is definitely clear and in, into the cavity, but the bottom is not. The bottom did not breach the internal cavity. That's a problem. I need to make sure that that bottom hole also breaches the cavity. So I'm going to come over to the browser window, right mouse click on the hole, and edit the feature. And what I'm going to change is instead of a 1 inch depth, I'm going to go 1.50. And again, I could also edit the feature by highlighting the feature, right mouse clicking and choosing Edit Feature. Both will work. The point being is that there's multiple ways to do an edit with an inventor. So now I've done a 1.50 depth that has now breached the bottom surface also. We can see that the two holes are now located into the cavity. I have one more hole to place, and I'm going to place that hole on the bottom in the middle, so I'm not even going to worry about a sketch. I'm just going to go to the hole command. I'm going to do a linear based hole, and it's going to be based on the surface. I'm going to eyeball about where the center is. I need to pick two reference geometry lines. One reference geometry line from one vertical edge, and that needs to be 1.50 and a reference geometry edge from a horizontal line, and that also needs to be 1.50. We'll continue with the 1 half inch hole. This time though, I can look at the depth of the hole to see if it's going to breach the cavity. So at this point, I'm not sure if it's going to breach the cavity because it might be a partial breach. I can look inside and it doesn't look like it's going to breach it at all because the depth is not deep enough. Hmm. If I set it to two inches, is it deep enough? Or is the alignment of the hole just not going to work with the breach? Well, I could make it a little bit deeper. Let's go 2.5. And now it should breach into the hole of the bottom. What I want to make sure is that this object does not totally go through the top of the diagonal hole, and it doesn't. So let's go ahead and choose OK. We'll cut that hole through, and now we actually have a hole that goes into the diagonal surface. Looking good. Now what is this all about? Well, this particular object that we just created is going to be used in my next video to talk about section views and auxiliary views. Have a great day.